Magandang araw. Welcome to SBS Filipino. I'm Mark Liabrez, and in this two-part interview of Talking Sports, I'm very honoured to have with me a Filipino volcano who has helped change the landscape of the overball in the Philippines. Please give your undivided attention to Mr. Jake Letts. Mabuhay. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Oh, good stuff. Um, so, why are you back in Australia? So, originally... I was back for a friend's wedding. However, I'm with the Philippine Rugby Football Union, so we decided to throw a recruitment day here in Sydney. Um, a lot of our players are originally were based here in Sydney through Filipino families and our upbringing here. So it's, it's really good to be home um, and to obviously give back in, in each way I can. Well, uh, welcome back. And um, I can see the weather's just holding out for you. Um, where in the Philippines is your Filipino heritage located and which side of the book or tree is Filipino? So my mother's side. Um, Nine times out of ten, that's always the case. However, uh, my mum's from Bicol originally. Um, growing up, though, we went there for family reunions, and from there, my mother's one of ten. So a big family, um, a lot of cousins, and they're, they're now all over the all over the Philippines, Porto Galera, Baclaran, General Manila. It's, it's crazy, and uh, it's good to be home. Um, yeah, so you're back for work. Um, so that means you're in the Philippines. How long have you been living there, and what is life like? there for you now? So I've been based in the Philippines now two years full time. Um, I've been going back playing for the national team for the last 12 years. So basically my role now has developed and evolved. Um, I'm now the national team's head. So I, I look over all the national programs um, purely because of the fact that I was one of their, their products, I guess, growing up. So I, I've been there for, for 11 to 12 years now and um, I know all the players, I know all the coaches, I know the board of directors. So right now um, my current deal with the Philippine Rugby Union is the national team's head. When did you first pick up a uh, rugby ball? I was six when I first picked it up. I, I basically followed my two elder brothers into it and my father. So it's kind of a, I couldn't imagine rug, life without rugby. It's, it's opened up op opportunities for me um, throughout the world, in Japan, in the Philippines, all over Asia. It's, it's unbelievable. Who would have thought that you know, having a Philippine passport can, can, can open up so many opportunities? Well, I uh, actually saw your first photo and it was the under-19s. Um, tell us how it all began for you with the Filipino Volcanoes. Yeah, so basically I was, when I first, I was recruited in 2005 to play for the, for the Volcanoes in the, in the Southeast Asian game. So my brother was the first Philippine foreigner to be recruited and then he was like, oh, look, I've got a younger brother. Can he come trial? And that's when I, I gave up my schoolies trip. Um, I was in year 12, I had it all booked, it had, I think it was like $450 at the time and then my brother was like, do you want to come trial for the Philippines? And I said, sure, why not? And then, so I sold my ticket and I went there and played for the Philippines and we won the gold as an exhibition sport and then ever since then, yeah, I've been going back every year. Uh, that's awesome. I, Jake, look, I have to mention the infamous uh, bench campaign and for all the people that don't know, the Volcanoes players did a photo shoot with bench underwear and when the campaign was launched billboards had to be taken down within the hour tell us what's going on there and how did it all make you feel yeah it's uh, it actually really is a funny story so basically bench i think it was 2011 they were our headline sponsor and they said they wanted to do a calendar to not only promote the philippines sorry the philippine rugby football union but also raise a bit of money for us so traditionally they were like great let's do a calendar shoot so all we were told was we had a squad of 30 and um they, they wanted to pick 12 so we had portrait shots in training camp and then we had like a team meeting we did a full team photo and then they read out 12 players names it was hilarious so basically Ned Stevenson was one of them, Terry Carroll, Oliver Saunders from memory, but none of us had ever done anything like it. And when they read out each other's names, it was like someone, it was like winning the lottery or something at the time. Um, but the, the funny thing was, we actually weren't told what it was going to be other than a calendar. So we didn't get told about the billboard. We thought it was going to be one billboard and that was it. Uh, little did we know that they ended up doing, I think, five billboards. Um, it was up for an hour. I was actually in Australia. Um, I'll never forget the story. I was having breakfast. My mum watches the TFC. So we were sitting there eating breakfast and then she was like, is that you? And I looked at the TV and that's them pulling it down. <laughs> so it was quite funny. But to be fair, it really did, you know, in terms of brand awareness and who the Philippine Volcanoes were, it, it really worked. Um, but yeah, it, it is definitely a marketing ploy for Bench and I think they got their bang for their dollar and so did we. Well, I think that's a, actually a unique story for any uh, Filipino national side, you know. Uh, back to rugby and where have you travelled to with the Volcano team? 
Oh, the Volcanoes have not so many opportunities for, for young for, for young athletes and young Filipinos in general. So basically, we've been through all the way from Taiwan, Hong Kong, Sri Lanka, India, Malaysia, Russia, UAE, China, all over Asia we've been. And lucky enough in 2013, we, we qualified for the World Cup and it took us as far as Moscow. So that's definitely the the pinnacle for us as a rugby nation and as any rugby player to play in a World Cup. So that's as, that's the furthest that got us. Um, yeah, it, it opens up opportunities for sure. What advice can you give any boy or girl who's considering joining the Volcanoes? I definitely sign up. You know, for it, it, in terms of sport in general, like I think sport as a as any human being or as any child, it, it, it really does create. It, it develops values, it develops what a player wants to be. Um, I think not only just in life in general, but you create great mates from it, family from it, and you'll find that it's always something you want to build on every year. So it's really an investment in what you want to achieve, not only on the field, but literally memories. Like for the last 11 years, I've made the best of friends um, everywhere around the world, not just the Philippines, not just Australia, but you'll find that the people that you meet and the, the relationships that you make playing sport, and especially for the Philippines, um, you'll take take with you forever. Well, how do you, how do you give, um, how, how do guys and girls find out about it? So like what other resources can they uh, reach in order to, to troll or get in touch with you guys? Yeah, so the easiest is definitely social media. So you can follow um, at Philippine Rugby, at Facebook, at Twitter, at Instagram. Um, that's the easiest way. Or you can also just go to our website, uh, perifu.com. So basically all the information there and you can contact one of our management staff and they'll be in touch. But again, it's open to all to all ages, to all Philippine heritage, full Filipino half. Even if your grandparents are Filipino, you still qualify to play for the Philippines. Awesome. Most proud this moment representing the Philippines? Uh, my most proudest moment to represent the Philippines was it'd probably have to be the World Cup, definitely. Uh, that and the Hong Kong Sevens, I think, are two pinnacles, um, two of the major events in rugby, and we had the opportunity to do that both in 2012 and 2013. But in saying that, every game you play for the, for the, for the nation is special. It doesn't matter what tournament, you'll find that it's, it really hits you, you know, in the warm-up, um, in the change room, in the dressing sheds, when you have your coaches around you, your players around you, you find that that's when it sinks in. And we were lucky enough to, you know, to win every year from 2007 to 2000. 2012 and have successful years after that as well but you find that winning and being with what we call you know a band of brothers is, is really special what challenges have you faced being a filipino in uh, in this particular sport yeah growing up i was believe it or not we were the asian family it's quite funny like in in the philippines we're phil foreigners in in australia we're asians however um in terms of battles, it wasn't really, it wasn't too hard. I was, I was lucky enough to grow up on the northern beaches of Sydney. Um, rugby was a big sport. My brothers played it. I, I played it. I was lucky enough to play at a young level and and get chosen representative teams purely because of the age that I learnt and um, I was lucky enough to have that. So in terms of battles, it was more so being able to fight. What I wanted most out of it was to be able to represent, you know, at my highest level. So to do that, the Philippines was just a blessing. On that note, what's your favourite thing about being a volcano? Uh, as mentioned before, it's just the relationships you make. Honestly, like it's all about. For that, that's that's what it's that's what started it. Because when I first started to play for the Philippines, the level wasn't too high. Um, it was just developing in Asia. However, now we've reached a point where we compete with the best in Asia. We compete with the likes of Japan, Hong Kong, Korea. And in order to do that, you have to have you know the elite players with Philippine heritage or born and bred in the Philippines. So that's definitely the biggest thing I got out of it is the relationships. No, so it's obvious that it's gone a long way. How do you see the future of rugby union in the Philippines? Uh, being a member of the Volcanoes for 11 years, I've seen it grow and looking at the, the four-year plan, which I'm heavily involved in, with the World Cup being in Japan in 2019 and the Tokyo 2020 Olympics and rugby being a sport there, it's, it's only getting bigger. And I've seen the club, the country go from only two clubs to now we're up to 22 clubs. So, you know, it's, it's come a long way. And it's a credit to the Philippine Rugby Football Union for, for establishing that as a, as a foundation, as a code of rugby. So I believe that the future is very bright. I'm a leaguey 
I have a leggy background. Anyway, um, do you see a conflict of interest with the Philippines National Rugby League? No, definitely not. We've always, I know a few, I obviously know Paul Sheedy, um, I know a few of the boys that play for the Tamarows, but we are 100% supportive of the, the Philippine Tamarows. Again, we're, we're both, we both have the same vision. We want to represent the Philippines proudly and it's actually, it's unique that we can call upon the same skills and the same heritage and the same upbringing to, to be able to do that. So yeah, there's no conflict whatsoever. And um, again, any time that they need help, we're obviously there for them. Well, that's good to hear. And obviously it's just not just in the Philippines, but it's Australia. You know, there's always that sort of relationship between union and our league. Now, Jake, uh, all the fun part starts. <laughs> um, I have to ask the following questions to all my guests. Can you sing us a verse of the national anthem? Sure. By young Megili, first in the sing a la 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 big la 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 I really like Barack. I think what he's done for the United States and for the world in general is amazing. He's definitely one person I'd like to have dinner with. Uh, secondly, um, Denzel Washington. <laughs> he's just a, <laughs> I just, again, he's, I love all these movies. I think he's an absolute legend. And lastly, it would have to be Manny. I haven't met Manny yet. Um, again, I was idolizing him. Growing up as a, you know, watching boxing, being a boxing fan and see what he's done for the nation. So those three in one room would be great. Um, in any Filipino um, dinner, there has to be obviously Filipino food. So what's your favourite dish? Uh, definitely Liempo. Um, everyone knows that back home. So basically, oh, I'm a big fan of sisig, adobo. But those three are definitely my go-to. High cholesterol stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's your favourite Filipino word? Um, favorite Filipino word. That's probably not appropriate to say on here, so I've got to pick another one. <laughs> favorite Filipino word. Mm. I'm just trying to think what I use most. So everyone always says "glabe." That's one word. <laughs> Obviously, good one. Yeah, that's probably the we our players over there tend to use it a lot. So probably "glabe." Okay, this, this one's for for the ladies. Um. Maybe men as well. Uh, are you single? No, I'm happily taken. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> I've been I've been in a relationship now for oh, about 16 to 18, 16 months. So no, it's good. Happily taken. Okay. Lastly, no Filipino gathering goes without uh, a song or a karaoke. What's your go-to one? <laughs> karaoke was, for the record, I'm terrible. So, but uh, it'd have to be Ronan Keating when you say nothing and all easy verse. The tone's not too hard. You can always get another person to join you. So <laughs> that one. Terrible song, mate. Terrible song. Anyway, um, that concludes. I think the uh, interview. Thanks for coming on SBS. Um, it's been an absolute privilege and honour. And um, maraming salamat. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Maraming salamat. That's it for today's Talking Sports. Please tune in next Monday as we have a chat with a pair of rugby twins all the way from London, UK. Maraming salamat. Be sure to connect with us at Radio 97.7 FM, at Facebook, SBS Filipino, and visit www.sbs.com.au forward slash Filipino.